Jake here for American Muscle, and in this video, we're taking a look at the Ford Performance 5.0 Coyote Ignition Coil Set, fitting 2011 to 2016 Mustang GTs and 2012 to 2013 Boss 302s. Quick note about fitment here before we dive in. If your GT is a 2016 model year, you're gonna to wanna to confirm your build date before you order these. These are gonna fit cars that were built on or before February 23rd, 2016. So your connectors should have a red tab and ears on them where they meet the coil packs. Ford made a change to the electrical connector on cars built after February 23rd, 2016. So just confirm you've got the right connector and build date before you place your order. If your Mustang is feeling a bit down on power or just not churning out the same type of tire roasting capability it used to, then a tune-up might be in order. This ignition coil set comes right from the source at Ford Performance and is designed to be a direct replacement for your stock coils to get your engine running at its peak once again. Ignition coils are a key component in keeping your engine running as it was intended. But like most other components on your vehicle, they can wear out. They start to get weak and thus can't provide enough power to the spark plugs, which can cause your engine to run poorly, have misfires, get poor fuel economy, or just generally feel blah. And while you can't always go with aftermarket coils for perhaps a lower price, if you've not gone to forced induction or a crazy tune, engines tend to like the original type of coils best. Enter this kit. So this is a set of 100% brand new OEM coils directly from Ford. This is obviously a full set of eight coils, so it's gonna get your Coyote V8 running back in tip top shape, feeling more peppy like it did right out of the factory. Now, even if your car isn't feeling sluggish, it's never a bad idea to put some fresh ignition coils on there, if only for your own peace of mind. I also highly recommend swapping your spark plugs out at the same time too, since that's also an easy job, especially because you're basically already in there. Construction here is the industry standard heat resistant plastic with new seals and boots already included and installed on the coils, making these just a swap and go sort of installation. We'll talk more about that momentarily. Overall though, they're a high quality part. They come directly from Ford, so they're about as good as you're ever gonna get. Pricing comes in at about $400 and that puts them right in the middle of the category. Now you are paying a bit more for a standard ignition coil than you might expect, but these are again an OEM Ford part. So you're paying the money for the quality here. And if you wanna keep things stock, this is the way to do it. Installation gets a one out of three on our difficulty meter and should take you about an hour to complete. Now swapping coil packs is a pretty painless and simple job, especially on the Coyote V8. Just plan on it taking you some time. And here to walk you through the process now is one of our AM customers. To do a job such as this, even on a supercharged Mustang, such as what I have in front of me, the tools utilized aren't gonna to be too complex. Here we have a quarter inch ratchet, followed by a quarter inch extension, a swivel if needed, that's if you have a sway bar, a, a strut brace as I do. We have a 10 millimeter quarter inch for the battery. And we have a eight millimeter for the actual coil packs themselves. The flathead screwdriver does not technically need to be used, but in case you have stubborn plugs, it might come in handy. Hi there, American Muscle fans. My name is Kenneth Cal. And I am here today to show you how to install some battery for performance coil packs on my 2015 Procharge Mustang. Stay tuned. Let's start off with the removing the negative cable on the battery. And if you'd like to go one extra measure, you can also do the, the positive. Although I do not believe that it is necessary. And we're gonna let those rest. You do not need to remove the shock power brace and I'll walk you through it. Okay, as some of you may notice, the UPR catch can is more so in the way on this one, on this side. So there's gonna be a little bit of moving things around, but same concept as the other side. So we're gonna start off by pinching and removing some important pieces. From past experience, I know I'm gonna to have to remove the 
timing sensor right here up top. We could counterclockwise remove that unit and this side piece right here. Remember to clock this so no oil drips out. I do have just a hose because I have a 2018 manifold on here. So it's not the direct OEM unit. You may actually have a true solid line on here. In that case, I would just disconnect it in the appropriate locations. For me on this one, I'm just gonna slide it to create enough room that I could pop off the cover and slide it forward. Revealing my coils. Now we're gonna repeat that process. That one right there, I just did with it inside. Doesn't really matter which way you do it, as long as you don't break anything and it's easy to access. In this case, it just was. Plus, I forgot. Again, come in here, lift it up. It might be a little bit tight with all the new pieces. Pinch, pull it And there you go. We have all eight of them out. So we're gonna repeat that process. But beforehand, I'm actually changing my spark plugs. So stay tuned. Okay, we're back at it. We're gonna be installing some new coils. We did take out all eight of the old coils that have 41,000 miles on them. They did their job, but I have a miss. So spark plugs didn't fix it. They came back. So let's try the coils. So here in my hand is a brand new one from Ford Performance. So we're going to align all the rows, connect them, then redo the steps we did earlier today. So I'm gonna start with the back one first. Without putting it completely down in the hole, I'm gonna keep it up a little bit so I can put the plug on. You hear that click? That's great. You put in that seat for the little red clip and you just kind of bring it down. There are different ways. If you're in a location that's really wet, I am in Washington state, so technically I should. I did on the other ones, and I'm not sure if that's the cause of what happened to my issues, but I did use dielectric grease within side the unit, so no moisture would get in. But at the same time, this boot should protect you from that. So it's not the end of the world if you don't use it. Again, part way. Wait until you hear the click. Oh yeah. Set that off inside. And I'm going to go through and mark these later. I don't have a pen today, but I'll go through and mark them with time. They're not going to move these spots anyways, but if I ever have to move them, I want to be sure, certain that they um, stay within their certain area, or at least I know where they came from. And last one, hopefully you guys can see this. Take it. Ooh, that was a nice sound. Plug that in. That should give you a little bit of spring back on all of them. 
So let's get our bolts that we had. These little guys, little eight mils. Let's just put those in, start off with your hands because they're tiny. Make sure you don't drop them. And if you do, just have a magnetic wand nearby. And these do not need to be overly tight. You don't need to have a torque wrench. You don't need German specs. You don't need to have good and tight. All you need is a nice little tug. So there's nothing, nothing, nothing. Still loose, you can see by my wrist. And pressure. Just go like an eighth of a turn. Done. We'll go again. That's like a quarter of a turn, but it, it liked it. I didn't force anything. And while you're looking at this too, you could like overlook your engine bay, make sure there's nothing loose, frayed, cuts and hoses mice living around here if so make sure you take care of that we're gonna go back through get these last two and just yeah. perfect Okay, time to put on the cover. Make sure there's nothing inside of it. We're going to flip it upside down. Make sure the appropriate locations are here. We're just going to slide this guy back on. If you have a custom cover, take extra, extra time on it so you don't scratch up anything. I'm getting a new one, so I'm just going to throw it on and... Perfect. I have this guy right here and it usually gets stuck. So you're gonna have to pull back, take a screwdriver and just kind of move it up like that. Still didn't work. There it is, a little bit of power. You pop your finger in it, push in that little plug. This is just a straight through unit. Not sure if you can see that. Piece of E, we're just gonna slide that in. This is factory. This is not factory, but we're just gonna pinch this back, put it on, wait until it clips, clip thin, and apply the rest. Plug it back in your little cam. Sensor on that. Reroute these lines. Take it all back to where it once was. Back here. There you go. Let's go to the next side. Okay, for those also who have a centrifugal blower with a UPR catch can system, the best thing to do is remove what you can, then everything should just pull off as it should. First of all, remove the BCD unit. You twist these so it doesn't leak oil all over your engine. That aside, we're going to remove the oil cap and we're going to just lift up on the unit itself. What I like to use this as, if you flip it upside down, is a good tray to hold your bolts in. We're going to keep that on the side and as you can see we could easily access our leads right here. There are some YouTubers who like to remove the plugs first. I actually like to have some room to get my fingers in there to do so. So let's break this loose. Always move your bolt 
this off to a location. For safety, we could always add back in the oil cap. Let's lift up the coil. At this point, you could lift up on the red tab, click the in-between clip, and pulls off. You just remove yourself one coil. Let's keep going. Now, if you're gonna use this for some type of diagnosis, I would recommend you writing the cylinder number on the actual top of the coil pack itself. This helps eliminate any finding, well, this findings of a coil that you thought was in cylinder one to two to five, six. It just helps you keep everything in order. We're gonna replace ours, so it doesn't matter so much. Same thing, open pinch and remove. And by the way, if you have a lot of dirt or dust underneath the cover, it's always wise to spray it off with like an air hose of some sort. So you don't get any contaminants inside the spark plug box. And the last one on this side, we're gonna do the same thing we've done on the other ones. We're gonna lift it up first. So we have more grip on the plug, lifts up, and we're out. I'll meet you guys on the other side. Okay, as you saw, we just did this number one cylinder. We're just gonna lock this one in since it's done. We don't need anything else with it. Now we're gonna do the additional ones. And just so you know, the package, they do come with brand new units. I did not see that underneath the box because it was actually underneath some cardboard, but mine are actually in good condition. So I'll just keep these for next time. hard for you guys to see but I'm doing the same exact thing clipping and putting it we got one more left Okay, we're gonna throw this last one in. Okay, so those are in. Now we just need to grab our cover. Let's remove that cap again. Let's flip these leads, the hoses, throw that cover on. Perfect. Just reattach what's needed. Okay. Last but not least, we have the battery. Let's swap our socket off for that 10. 
Now let's reverse the order. Let's go positive first. Now, if you have a sensitive alarm, it might beep at you, so just make sure you have your keys nearby in case it starts doing a panic mode. This one does not have an aftermarket security system or a sensitive one, so it should be totally fine. That's going to wrap it up here for our review and install of the Ford Performance 5.0 Coyote Ignition Coil Set, fitting 2011 to 2016 Mustang GTs and 2012 to 2013 Boss 302s. Thanks for watching, and as always, for all things Mustang, be sure to keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.